Have you heard of the two viewpoints in the scriptures, the absolute viewpoint and the relative viewpoint? When you understand these two viewpoints, many aspects in the scriptures become clearer. One of the clearest examples of the absolute and relative viewpoints in the scriptures is regarding the death of Christ. Before I get to that, I want to make you aware of the helpful links in this video's description. Underneath this video, you'll see show more. If you click on show more, there will magically appear, as if by magic, many helpful links that will assist you as you continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our awesome God and Savior. And if you click on the link to my blog, The Biggest Jesus, there is a donate button for any who are desiring to give to this work in proclaiming the successful God and Savior. Please note that I am not able to receive donations from robots. In the death of Christ, we see both the absolute and relative viewpoints revealed very clearly in the scriptures. In Acts 2, 22-23, the Apostle Peter is speaking to the Israelites who are gathered in Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. Men, Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man demonstrated to be from God for you by powerful deeds and miracles and signs, which God does through him in the midst of you, according as you yourselves are aware. This one, given up in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God, you, giving by the hand of the lawless, assassinate. Notice that Peter, addressing the Israelites, says very specifically to them, you, gibbeting by the hand of the lawless, which would be the Romans, assassinate. Peter pointed out their responsibility for the assassination of Christ, even though it was committed by the hand of the Romans. This is the relative viewpoint. Anyone looking at the events of that day could clearly see it was the Israelites and the Romans who were responsible for the death of Christ. But Peter reveals something about this situation that no one could see. This is earth-shattering news. Verse 23, this one given up in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God. This event and every event that led up to the death of Christ was orchestrated according to the counsel, the will, and the foreknowledge of God, the very Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. This reveals to us the absolute perspective, which takes into account everything, including God and his point of view and his activity in the event. The relative viewpoint and the absolute viewpoint are two distinct viewpoints of the same event, the death of Christ. We see this revealed again in the believer's prayer to God in Acts 4, 27-28. For of a truth in this city were gathered against thy holy boy Jesus, whom thou dost anoint, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the nations and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever thy hand and thy counsel designates beforehand to occur. We have a couple more names, but it's basically the same group of people that are doing this from the relative viewpoint to Christ. Both Herod and Pontius Pilate together with the nations and the people of Israel. And it was God who assembled them together to do whatever thy hand and thy counsel designates beforehand to occur. This again is the absolute viewpoint. Everything was orchestrated by God. Another scriptural example of the absolute and relative viewpoints has to do with an individual coming to Christ. In this example, the two viewpoints are not in as close to proximity as they were regarding the death of Christ in the book of Acts. These four verses reveal to us the relative viewpoint and the absolute viewpoint regarding an individual coming to Jesus. In Matthew 11:28, Jesus said, Hither to me all who are toiling and laden, and I will be giving you rest. This is an open invitation to all who are toiling and laden. Seems very clear. Anybody who would have heard Jesus say this and saw him say this would think, well, anybody can come to Jesus. John 6, 35. Jesus then said to them, I am the bread of life. He who is coming to me should under no circumstances be hungry. Again, this seems like an open invitation to all who are hungry. All you have to do is come to Jesus and you will no longer be hungry. But we see the words of Christ expanded to include the absolute viewpoint in John 6, 44. No one can come to me if ever the Father who sends me should not be drawing him. Jesus makes it pretty clear by these words that not all people are being drawn to him by the Father. So it is actually God who determines who comes to Jesus and when. It is not up to the individual's free will or by their own power to come to Jesus. 
And in John 6, 65, Jesus also reveals the absolute viewpoint. And he said, Therefore, I have declared to you that no one can be coming to me if it should not be given him of the Father. The Father is the one who determines who comes to Jesus and when. So it is not actually up to our free will and our power. It is completely up to God. Without understanding the relative and absolute viewpoints in these verses, we could easily say that there is a contradiction here. But there is no contradiction. This is just one viewpoint versus another viewpoint. So if Jim, a new believer, came to Christ, we could legitimately say, based on the relative viewpoint, that Jim came to Christ. But we would also know from the absolute viewpoint that Jim could not come to Jesus without God drawing him. So with the absolute and relative, it makes sense of the entire situation, which includes God in the activity. And there is no contradiction when both viewpoints are considered and understood. The fact that it is up to God to determine when to draw someone to himself is good news because of what we know from 1 Timothy 2.4. Our Savior God wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth. Because it is his will that all be saved and come into a realization of the truth, Jesus could say very boldly in John 12, 32, And I, if I should be exalted out of the earth, shall be drawing all to myself. The first part of this, if I should be exalted out of the earth, occurred in the death of Christ when he was lifted up from the earth and crucified. Because that is done, that is a guarantee that he shall be drawing all to himself. Amen. From the relative viewpoint, it appears that we are doing things by our own free will and power. This can be seen when we hear people say about a new believer, Did you hear that Jim found Jesus? No. Where was he? I'm not sure. Where did you find him? Back in town. Because the distinction is not made between the absolute and the relative viewpoints, many have held the Jews ultimately responsible for the death of Christ. And many who come to Christ see themselves as wiser than those who do not come to Christ. But the absolute viewpoint reveals to us that God is the one running this multi-millennia stage production. And he's not doing it by passive sovereignty, allowing free creatures to do their own thing and only stepping in when necessary. He is operating by active sovereignty, meaning nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's creation apart from his active causing. Two verses that show us very clearly the active sovereignty of God are Ephesians 1.11 and Acts 17.28. The one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. Apart from God, there is no operating. He is the one that is doing all in accord with his will. In Acts 17.28. For in him we are living and moving and are. If God was not working through us, we would not be living and moving and we would not be. Everything comes from God and his active sovereignty and active involvement in everything within his creation. This big truth that God is in control and responsible for all things causes many to question God's true goodness when they realize that he is ultimately responsible for all good and all evil. Before you doubt that God is the cause and in control of all evil and all good, and before you judge God, remember that he is the cause of his own innocent son's death, but he is also responsible for his own innocent son's resurrection. God has used this enormous evil to save and reconcile his entire creation. Under God's control, all evil will be proven to be beneficial evil. We are all in good hands, God's hands. Everything he does has a purpose, a beneficial purpose for all of his creation. Please realize and keep in mind that God is in control and that his will is good, pleasing, and perfect for you and his entire creation. Thanks for watching. If this video has benefited you in any way, please delicately tap that like button. And I invite you to watch this next video on God good and evil and i invite you to watch this next video <coughs> <coughs>